joined by uh, victorious West Virginia University head coach Bob Huggins and student athletes Javon Carter, Daxton Mile, Daxter Miles Jr., and Tariq Phillip. Congratulations, guys, on advancing to the Sweet 16. Well, we're going to go right to questions for our student athletes, and then we'll release them uh, and have questions for Coach Huggins after that. So please raise your hand if you have a question. Let us get a microphone to you, get your name and affiliation, and we'll get started right now. Uh, go ahead, microphone, Mitch. Hey guys, Mitch Vingel from Charleston Gazette Mail. Can you talk about this backcourt that you guys form and what you thought about at the beginning of the year and what you showed today? Um, all year we've been telling ourselves that um, we got the best group of guards in the country and we truly believe that. So um, when it's time for us to play, we go out there, we give it our all, and sometimes it works, but we're going we gonna to put forth 100% and we're going to live and die with it. Others? Comment on that? No, he, he, he pretty much said it all. We, we believe that um, we put in a lot of work in the summertime. We came in um, believing that we were a tough group of guards um, and we just got to go out and show it. No? Fights too. Stu Boyer, Channel 2 Buffalo. Just wondering, how important to you guys was getting off to that huge start right off the bat and smacking them in the mouth right away? How much did that do for your confidence, and what did it do to get you into the game? Um, it was great flow, you know, from the start. And um, we've been having some really good practices leading up to the, uh, to the uh, tournament. And I don't know, man, it was just great flow on both sides, offense and defense. Yeah, um, I wouldn't say it's a confidence booster because whoever step on the court, we feel like we can beat them. So we just got hot early and we just kept going from there. Go ahead, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Javon, obviously you guys are known, especially in the backcourt, for your <coughs> defense, but today your offense was impressive as well. Do you guys carry a little bit of a chip on your shoulder because you don't get as much attention for that maybe as you deserve? Big chip. Um, definitely. Um, we keep that chip on our shoulder. Um, a wise man once said, uh, remember where you come from. <coughs> and um, we always keep that in the back of our mind. You know, um, all three of us up here, it wasn't an easy path to get here to West Virginia. We had to grind it out every step of the way. And um, when we get on that court, that just gives us a chance to go short and prove that other schools missed out on us. Lucky Gleason, uh, Buffalo News. And it, to jump on what Dana just said, Tariq, if, if you could talk about that, you just said big chip. It's almost like there's a, a notion out there that you guys can't play offense, but you have some good, really good shooters on this team. Um, yeah, we do. Um, first couple of years here, um, they, they thought of us as defensive players, you know, but um, coach, coaching staff instilled a lot of confidence in us, helped us develop our offensive game, and we became pretty good offensive players. Let's get a microphone right back here. Go ahead, Greg. Greg Hunter, Bowl <coughs> News. Dax, sir, for you to start, and I guess Javon and Tariq, you can follow up. But they were known for, as a team that didn't turn it over a whole lot. You guys got 10 the first half and sort of set the tone. Did, did you feel like your press still was good against them, no matter how good they are at normally handling such pressure? Um, I mean, the Irish, that's a great program, you know, great coach. But uh, tonight, well, uh, today, we just – like I said, um, it was a great flow defensively and offensively. I think all five guys was on the same page early into the game. With that, that gave us extra confidence leading, you know, as the game went on, and we just took it from there. Let's go back to Mitch. Guys, did you feel out there that they were wearing down that, you know, bringing in a bunch of people? Did did you feel that they were starting to wear down? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, that's, a, uh, that's what we pride ourselves on. You know, we, got, we go 11, 12 deep, 13 sometimes, and other teams only play six, seven, eight people. So we, we, we was always told that um, our 15 is better than their 15. So we get into that bench. That's a bonus for us. Go ahead, Buck. Any of you guys can answer this, because you all were in, on the perimeter. 
were you surprised how much room that you had on the perimeter, whether or not they respected your your outside game enough? Um. Yeah, I, I guess you can say that. Um, we just played, man. Uh, we knew they were small, <coughs> trying to get inside to our bigs a lot, play inside out. And um, we knew they was going to have a hard time guarding us. OK, last one for our student athletes. Go ahead, Craig. Start with Tariq. Tariq, did you guys ever get tired of hearing about foul shooting? Because obviously, again, tonight, like yesterday, you guys were really good at the line and sort of sealed it there. Um, Coach has always been said, always said, um, turnovers and free throws is gonna determine the ball games with us. So um, we go to the line, we just gotta step up and man up and hit the free throws. Anybody else to add to that? Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks very much for your time. Congratulations. Thanks. We'll uh, now open up for questions for Coach Huggins. He's Please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. you want that shirt? I'm sorry. Questions? <clears throat> Let's start with Mitch and then we'll go back. Coach, I was just wondering, I know you expected this from the backcourt even before the season, but is this the best you've seen of the total backcourt all year? There was a sports writer in West Virginia who put a poll out, are we top 20, are we top 50, are we top 100, and I shared that with our guys. And our guys goes, top 100. And uh, we use that as, as kind of a source of motivation. Um, did I know they were that good? I know this, they put an enormous amount of time in. They. Um, they're in the practice facility 12 months out of the year. And it, you know it's great when you don't have to kind of tell people to go in there, they go in there. And, and uh, you can see, I mean, Tariq came in, not a very good shooter. He's a pretty good shooter now. JC came in and, and uh, was not real consistent. He's pretty consistent now. And you know, I think, you know, you go, Nate, Elijah's put a lot of time in a lot more time than than what he once did. So um, they, they deserve a lot of credit for, uh, they want to get better. They, they want to get better and they want to win. They oh. get tired of people talking down about them, honestly. Go Mark and then Bucky up front. Uh, Coach Mark Tracy from the New York Times, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, on uh, kind of after the first two days of the tournament, the uh, prevailing fan sentiment about the tournament has been, you know, there have been a lot of big upsets. And I'm sure in this case, you're, you're pleased with that. But I was wondering if you could speak more generally as someone who's been involved in so many tournaments, if it at all feels different this year and how important or unimportant you think that is to a good tournament. I think the TV people would tell you if they're if they're honest, they'd rather have West Virginia and Notre Dame than they would uh, a, a, a smaller school because the numbers are going to be better. I mean that's that's pretty much a fact. I mean, you have an upset and so they have to play it and they play it and they play it and they play it and then they have a meeting on Monday. They say, "What the hell just happened?" I mean that's the reality of it all. Um, so. Uh, it doesn't make it a better tournament. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if it does or it doesn't. Bob, you, you guys take, obvious so much pride in your defense. Do you ever quietly kind of laugh to yourself? Because you know what, what this team can do offensively when there's so much attention paid to the defensive side that, you know, this team's really good offensively. Well, we just today broke the school record for points in a season. Um, so we're averaging 82 a game. I, I uh, did the uh, pregame radio show, and, and um, Tony said, uh, you know, there's people saying that you can't score with them. And I said, we're averaging 82 a game. Now, there's days, honestly, I don't know how we get to 82. But somehow we do. And um, our guys play so hard that it's, I think it, it's, um, 
I think it forces other people to play harder. But I think it also, people aren't used to playing at the pace that we play at. Let's go over here, Mark. Okay, Coach, uh, just uh, just your ball movement. What can you say what, uh, about your ball movement? I mean, you had some stretches there where like a nine straight possession score. The first half you had seven of eight and then eight of nine. I just, what did you think of that? Well, thank God, because we threw it away four straight times to start the second half, which we're prone to do as well. Um, when we when we stay in 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 our stuff, when we get we you know we our our whole deal with them has been do what you can do. Don't try to be something you're not. And and uh, you know we've got post guys now that have turned into really good post guys because they don't go in and shoot three pointers you know for 20 minutes before practice. They actually go in and work on shooting jump hooks. And you know that's been a process. Quite frankly, it's been a process. And then uh, just your defensive plan against them. I mean, to start the game, both teams were missing. So there wasn't, uh, you didn't have a ton of makes real early where you could put the press on. But it seemed like you didn't uh, throw the full weight of the, the half court traps at them as much as maybe you did against Bucknell. Um, thoughts on that? Well, we just wanted to wear them down. We wanted to make them work really hard at at uh, advancing the ball. Um, they shoot the ball so well. It's you know if you trap them and and you don't do a good job or you don't make the right rotation, they're gonna make shots. And so we were a little concerned about that. I didn't want to turn them loose. You know I thought I thought against Buck. Now we did a horrible job of 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 stopping the ball. And so they. They constantly were attacking the rim, and and I didn't want Notre Dame to attack the rim. I wanted them to. I wanted them, quite frankly, to shoot threes, rather than turn them loose in the pressure. So, I mean, that's what that's what we do. We try to make people play the way that kind of we want them to play, and it's hard. Mike's a great coach. He's not a good coach. He's a great coach, and, and uh, to do what he's done is just phenomenal. And I've got I've got just a world of respect for him as a coach and as a, as a person. Last question, quickly. Um, congratulations, coach. Thank you. Um, in the first um, game, <coughs> kind of to piggyback off his question, you gave up um, I believe forty five percent from the three point land, and um, you did also early this game. In the second half, you only gave up thirty set from beyond the arc. Um, is there? Do you credit the traps to that? Like you were talking about. I know you say you wanted them to shoot threes, but they were shooting them and missing them. I don't know. That's probably a better question to ask them. I don't know. Um, I thought I thought in the first half we we didn't really um, we didn't contest as well as we did in the second half. Uh, but um, you know, I'm I don't know. People tell me that it would you know it's just the the constant having to work hard to get the ball up the floor, work hard to get open, um, kind of takes people's legs. But that's that's a question really better asked to them than me. I I I have a hard enough time trying to figure out what these three knuckleheads are up here were doing, rather than you know worry about what Notre Dame was thinking. I I struggle at figuring out what they're doing. You know. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. I, can I say this? Listen, I love Buffalo. Uh, I came here in 93, World University Games, we won. Uh, played Canisius and whatever it was, 07, and we won. And came here in 2010, and we won two, and we just won two now. I, I love Buffalo. Any, and anytime y'all want to invite us to come back, we'll come back. You're always welcome. Thank you. <clears throat>
Okay, we're joined by uh, Notre Dame head coach Mike Bray as well as uh, B.J. Beecham and Steve Astoria. Um, open up with a statement from Coach Bray and then questions for our student athletes. Well, I thought our start really hurt us. You know, we were in a 10-0 hole and you're kind of digging out against them the whole day. Um, it was hard to get over it. Um, their style of play is really hard to deal with. I think, you know, it wore on us at times. And even though we only turned it over 14 times, four in the second half, probably caused us to miss some of those open looks. You're going to have to make some open looks after you get it out of the trap. And we probably couldn't make enough of them. Um, but uh, they're really good. They're really good. They got to the look. They could play for a while. Uh, Bob's done an unbelievable job, like reinventing with full court pressure. You know, it's, uh, it's brilliant, and it's really uh, a unique preparation to try and deal with it. Thank you, Coach. Um, questions now for uh, VJ or Steve only at this time. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Let's start over here with Jay. Hi, uh, Jay Skirsky with the Buffalo News for VJ. Uh, just offensively, it, it seemed like a struggle for uh, for you tonight. Just anything in particular that you can point to uh, that that gave you difficulty? Was it what they were doing defensively, or was it more uh, your own thing? Um, I think you know my teammates did a great job of finding me open shots. You know, like they usually do. Um, you know, just today I just wasn't able to knock them down. Uh, you know, of course they wear you down a little bit. Uh, maybe that's why some of them were short, short, but I just didn't knock them down tonight. Let's go all the way to the back, and we'll come here. Steve, for you, and, and I guess BJ as well, in terms of their defense, obviously their press gets the note, but is it just speeding you up as much as actually forcing turnovers that causes you problems? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it's, uh, I think that's the goal of the press. You know, they obviously want to turn you over, but if not, they want to get you out of our rhythm. And I think besides our start, you know, I thought we did a pretty good job. You know, we got a bunch of good looks. Um, you know, Matt, TJ, Rex, we did a good job of, um, you know, getting the ball across half court. And uh, But like Coach said, you don't have to knock down open shots once you, once you get it across half court. And, um, you know, we, we didn't make enough of those today. Good, John. Jonah Bronstein, Sports Exchange. Steve, did they shock you at all at the start? Because like you said, after that first series at the, at the beginning, it was a pretty even game. Was there anything, did the pressure do something to you guys that took you a while to adjust? Um, I don't think it shocked us. I mean, if you look at those first four or five possessions, we got really you know, good looks at the basket. We just didn't knock them down. And uh, those are shots we usually make. And, um, you know, we expect to make those shots. And um, so that's, I think, that's part of the reason they got off to such a good start. And that's why we were in a little bit of a hole. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. For VJ this time, was their offense a bit of a surprise? They're, they're sometimes hot and cold from the perimeter. Was their ability to hit outside shots a little bit of a surprise to you? Uh, we know they wanted to bang it inside. Um, they did a decent job of that, but as far as knocking down shots, you know, they really knocked down some big time shots, especially in the first half, you know, to kind of keep us at bay when we were trying to make our runs. Any other questions for Notre Dame student athletes? Okay, not seeing any. Steve, VJ, uh, congratulations on a great season. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Go ahead with questions for Coach Bray at this time. Let's start over here with Jay and then we'll come over here. Coach, you mentioned in your introduction there about the, the slow start and you know you fall, fall behind 10 to nothing. What do you point to for the, uh, you know, the reason for that? You know, I, it's like Steve said, um, the shots we got were pretty good ones. We had a little runner in the lane, VJ with a 10 footer on the baseline. And um, I don't know. I mean, I think we were awake and ready to play. Um, I don't think we were, we weren't turning the ball over at that time to give them the 10-0 lead. I think it was, um, you know, missing some stuff. We may have been shocked we were so open because um, we were for, really prepared for them to be after us, um, and they were. Uh, you know, um, we had our spurts of turning the ball over, but 14 against them is, that's a pretty good day, only four in the second half. Um, but you got to make, you know, you got to make a few over the top of it. And the back, your question, I thought, was, I mean, 
I didn't expect them to shoot it from outside as well. I thought we could play a little more zone and make them make more threes. And they made every big three-point shot. And Carter is a big-time winner. What a stud guard he is. He's, he's fabulous. He's just a veteran winner in college basketball. Mark. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. I was interested you said that how, how Bob kind of reinvented the book. How is it different? How, how, how did he reinvent this? Well, this is the first. And we played West Virginia a bunch back in the old Big East days. Bob and I, I were actually, actually talking about how we, we missed those. Mm -hmm. Uh, those days, but they were not a full court pressure team then. They played a little bit of the one three one you saw, but they were still grinding you and posting you and pounding on you on offense. Uh, but I think you know going into a new league, um, I thought it was it's a brilliant move by Bob, who, who's a brilliant coach obviously, to put it put together a style of play that everybody really has to adjust to uh, in league play. Yeah. And I guess you know, obviously you know him. And what is it about him? What is his brilliance? Well, I mean, this guy's been winning for a long time at a lot of places. I mean, he is just a good old basketball coach. He loves practice. He loves to go in and talk X's and O's. He's one of those guys that just loves talking hoops. And they've got a great culture about their program now. And they've found a heck of a niche in the Big 12. I feel for them. I don't know how they fly three hours to every road game. I mean, it, it's unbelievable that they have to do that. But yet, there they are playing in the Big 12 championship. Um, the one thing about West Virginia that's the same, when we played them back in the Big East, and more so today, they got men. They have men. They have old dudes. And uh, staying old is a good thing in college basketball. They're a little older than us today. Go all the way in the back right Chris corner. Chris McKee, Sportsnet Canada. It seemed, you know, for every time you guys started to chip away at the lead, you know, they, they had a counterpunch for you. Can you talk about, you know, the frustration of that? It, it, just as you seem to getting momentum. Yeah. It know? does break your spirit. I mean, I've got a really mentally tough group, but that was a real mental test today because anytime we thought we'd get this thing to four or get it to two possessions, somebody hit a big three or they got a put back. It's, it's really spirit breaking after a while, and it does wear on our group. I give our guys credit, we kept fighting, but eventually that really is, that, that does a lot of psychological damage. Um, and we hadn't been in one of those in a while. You know, we really hadn't been in one of those where we were digging out of a hole and trying to come back. We hadn't, really hadn't been in one in a while. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, the decision to leave Bonzi in when he picked up his fourth foul, um, just maybe explain what went into that thinking. And on a day offensively where you were having a tough time getting a lot of guys going, he was really doing a lot for you. Yeah, wasn't he? I don't think you're saving him for, uh, you know, for the stretch run. The stretch run was a whole second half trying to dig out of a hole. And, and quite frankly, I, I took you, the staff and I talked. If he fouled out, I think we would have played five guards and just maybe try and make some shots. But He's smart. He's a veteran guy. He did a good job not fouling. He was unbelievable today. You know, some of our other guys didn't make some stuff. He just put, again, he puts the team on his back. And, you know, he's not 100%. You know, that ankle's bothering him. I mean, just that, that's one of the great performances, just trying to carry a team on a bad wheel. Uh, but, yeah, there's no such thing as taking him out with four because we're either going to get it now or we're, we're going to get beat by 20. Coach, thanks for your Thank time. Thank you. Great season. Yep.